Yo people, it's your girl Laughter. Welcome back to my mini home studio inside my bedroom. This week I'm going to be talking about setting up logic for beginner users. I'm also going to be doing three follow-up sessions on how to mix, how to record yourself, how to bounce a session and I might even uh, put in there how you can actually import your own plugins because that's something else that I struggled with. So this is again like I said for beginner people starting out on Logic and this first session is so important because in order for you to record you need to make sure your settings in Logic are correct. I'm going to start off there's so much inside Logic that I'm selecting the basics to start with and then as we build I'll be telling you more and more functions within logic so let's get started the first thing you're going to see when you open and click logic is this by the way I'm assuming you've already connected your audio interface if you haven't make sure you have because yeah there's you you won't be able to record at all so you need to make sure your mic is set up and so forth so what you're going to click as soon as you see this is empty project and you will get something like this. As we are recording vocals, we will stick to audio. If you were going to produce, you would go to software instrument. It's quite self-explanatory with the rest of it. Now, in terms of input, you would leave it. It should automatically connect to the input. Your mic has already been put into your, social, um, into your audio interface. If it hasn't been connected, it's going to be difficult. So my mic is connected into input one within my audio interface. So that's correct. And I'm going to leave it like that. You leave all these unticked. As you can see, my input device is Scarlet. So to make sure your input is in there, you, you would see that it's recognized your audio interface here. Output device should also be matching and it should be the Scarlet 2i2 for me, but whatever one you're using should also come up here and they should both match. You leave output one and two, and there's nothing really you need to click here. You could click record enable, but again, everything is fine and it will function normally. So to start with, I only create one track because I'm assuming we're going to record the vocals over an instrumental, which again, I'm going to be talking about in another session next week when we go into actually recording your vocals on how you import the instrumental. So we'll create this track. And this is exactly what you get. Let's get straight into the settings within Logic. So what you want to do, the first thing is go into Logic, go into Preferences and go into Recording as we are setting up a recording track, of course. Now, you want to make sure that this is left at 24 bit recording. All that means is your vocals are going to be more dynamic. It, you know, when you're recording on the mic, sometimes you go lower, sometimes you go louder, but what that does, having it on 24 bit, it allows a variation more dynamics in, in the amplitude and the way you're delivering so that you can record quietly and loud at the same time without it sounding too different from each other. Another thing you want to make sure is that at the top here, when you click advanced, you should see all these ticked. Again, in advanced settings, just make sure all these are ticked. Now, what I would like you to do within audio, I would like you to select devices. Here in devices, make sure core audio is enabled. You want to ensure that your output and input device is your audio interface. So mine is a Scarlett 2i2 and it's recognized it, which is great. Now, we're gonna come back to this in more detail next week, but if you are keen to start recording this week, you need to ensure that when you're recording, your buffer size is as low as possible. Now, buffer size, all that means is, it's a fancy way of explaining latency it's a fancy way of explaining delay right so you want to make sure that your buffer size is small so that it doesn't take long for the signal to go in between your mic and your audio interface the higher the buffer size the longer that it's going to take which means you're going to hear that annoying delay and no one wants to record with a delay so make sure before you record every single session you need to make sure that your latency is set to either 64 or 128. I record with 128 and that's because my Focusrite can hack it basically. When you do mix 
you need to actually increase your buffer size so that your your logic doesn't freeze. Like I said, that will make sense later on. But when you're recording, you need to make sure it's on 128 or 64. So you go file, audio, devices. So let's set that to 128. And you can just leave everything else there, that's fine. Now we need to go into file at the top, go into project settings and click audio. Here you've got the sample rate. All this is, is when you're recording, you're recording analog and it's the rate to, in which your vocals are basically sampled to turn digital. OK, so we need to have this as high as possible, but not too high because it will just take up a lot of um, storage within your computer. So I've set mine to 44.1 kilohertz, which is standard. You could also say it at 48, but 44.1 is good or it just means it's a snapshot of your vocals per second so this is something like 44,000 kind of it picks up signals 44,000 times um before it's actually uh translated digitally which is good it allows for the quality of course the higher the snapshot the more clearer but yeah that's going to take a lot of power and energy and it's, it's not going to happen so standard one is to set it at 44.1 it's important you set this before you record when you're recording as well here on the left panel you want to make sure your input is one and you need one circle if you click on the circle notice how it turns into two all that means is it's a stereo channel now and if you're recording vocals through a stereo channel it's not going to sound right so make sure whatever you do that this left channel here is a one circle which just means you're recording mono which is the correct way this right channel here as you can see it says stereo out that's correct and so that's why you're going to have the two circles there okay i'm going to go into uh, the recording features next time so i'll tell you how you set up your tempo for instance and how you record um, and record enable your vocals so for now i literally just wanted to set up your settings by the way if you're really really keen to get started just press the r button select r on your keyboard and you can really start recording your vocals now if you have a scarlet audio interface that requires phantom power mine does so i have to click where it says 48 volts next week i'll show you in more detail what we're talking about actually recording vocals and there's some tips that i need to teach you with the instrumental and so forth so there's a lot to teach next week but like i said if you're really keen i don't i don't blame you i know how it is make sure you click your phantom power on your audio interface otherwise it won't pick it up look you can see now because i've turned it on and the way you check that your um, vocal is being picked up is through here this green signal that you can see in my audio file that's because I've got my phantom, pa phantom power on. If I was to turn it off, you can see my vocal is no longer being picked up here on my audio track. And that shows that there's no signal going through because I haven't got my phantom power on. Whenever you record, you need to have that phantom power on. When you stop recording, just turn it off. On my Scala 2i2, it's where it says 48V, 48 volts phantom power. And you, you're probably wondering straight away, where's all the mixer channel? You're going to have to play around, okay? Um, if you press X, you can get the mixer channel or you can press here and you can have a look and so forth. And start going ahead, playing with the plugins if you wanted and so forth. But I'm going to be talking you through. I don't want to rush it. There's a lot to logic. As you can see, it's, it's, there's so much and I'm still learning, okay? But I'm going to talk you through the steps. Today, I literally just wanted to talk you through how you set up Logic so that it's prepared and ready for you to record. Next week, I'm going to be sharing some tips on recording and so forth. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much.